WSSB, Girl TV. Hi, I'm Helena. And I'm Peyton. Welcome to WSSB Girl TV, where we're strong, smart, and bold. We would like to thank our supporters and partners for our great new look. Isn't it great? I love it. Oh. It really highlights how the girls here at Girls Inc. are strong, smart, and bold. Today's episode is all about animals. We have hippos, black bears, toads, and monarch butterflies. We also have squirrels, seahorses, and doves. We'll check out Zandy's interview with Phyllis Kessler of Kane's Furniture. And we'll see my interview with Dr. Kirk Volker. So get ready for a fun and wild time. Let's go. Hi, I'm Helena. Today I'm telling you about hippos. Right now, I'm in the swamps of Africa on the internet at outofafrica.nl. Did you know that hippos can weigh up to three and a half tons? That's a lot. That's as heavy as seven pickup trucks. The hippo's longest lifespan is 50 years. Hippos are herbivorous. That means that they only eat plants. A hippo has three predators, people, lions, and crocodiles. I wouldn't think that a crocodile can eat a 7,000 pound hippo. Hippos are the third largest mammal after white rhinos and elephants. Hippos don't sweat. Instead, they release a fluid, red fluid that acts like sweat. They also release this fluid when they are excited. Hippos live in swamps, lakes, and protected areas. They rely on these wet and moist areas for cooling. That's all for today's segment. I need to get away from that croc over there. For Girl TV, I'm Helena. Bye! Today's media sponsor commercials would not be possible without the editing team at Brad Bryan Multimedia. Thank you, Brad, for sharing your strong, smart, and bold talent. I'm Hannah. You think you know a lot about bears, but how much do you really know about black bears? They're scary, they're big and tall, and they eat your food if you're going camping. Black bears basically live in large forests, but do leave the forest to look for food. Sometimes they are attracted to our towns because of food. Black bears a lot of times mark trees by scratching them, and whoever scratches it the highest is the owner of that tree. Even though most black bears live in North America, they are not related to brown bears or polar bears. The ancestors of black bears and Asiatic bears come from sun bears. Later, different kinds of bears grew to a size that you can compare to a grizzly bear. From a long time ago to now, black bears seem to have shrunk in size. Black bears live in the same time as short-faced bears. The black bear's regular behavior is able to make a, a bold deed to get a lot of food. Have a very good afternoon. The Observer. It's red everywhere. I'm Rihanna focusing on Long Boat Key. I'm Erica focusing on Sarasota. I'm Peyton focusing on East Town. I'm Maya focusing on Siesta Key. Wow! I love all the news about my neighborhood, Siesta Key! I just can't get my eyes off my neighborhood, East County. I'm enjoying the great event information about my neighborhood, Sarasota. I love everything new happening in my neighborhood, Longboat Key. And I just read the diversion section about the celebration luncheon and how Girls Inc. has inspired the Observer to support us. Thank you, Observer! The Observer. You, your neighbors, your neighborhood. Girls Incorporated of Sarasota County is a nonprofit youth program for girls age 5 to 14. Through a variety of different programs, Girls Inc. helps young girls become strong, smart, and bold. One way it does this is with Dream Harbor, a miniature society run completely by the girls. It has a government of elected officials, its own money and bank, shops, and even a television production studio. The mayor of Dream Harbor is 10-year-old Trinity. Let's meet her now for a tour of Dream Harbor. Hello, I'm Trinity, and I'm the mayor of Dream Harbor. The different jobs at Dream Harbor are the government center, the bank, and post office. This is where all the girls get their money, their money for a consumer break. Yeah. Mini Chef's Cafe. The cafe, they give a snack here. Today we just had turkey salad, fresh apples, and a cookie. 
the Science Museum as they make gap, goo, and lava lamps and lots of other fun stuff. The gym, which is Fitness Fanatics. Shabby Chic Beauty. Color My World. WSSB Girl TV. Um, right now we are in our production room and right now we are currently working on the show, the movies, and they're all writing scripts right now. From all of us at Girls Inc., thanks for coming on our tour. Hi, I'm Shayla Brown, Girls Inc.'s 2012 Girl of the Year. Just as Girls Inc. is hosting our 24th Annual Celebration Luncheon, West Coast Women is celebrating their 24th year as a courageous publication for the women of our area. I want to personally thank Ms. Louise and the entire staff for being one of the media sponsors for this year's Celebration Luncheon and for giving me the chance to contribute this month's guest editorial. Take it from this West Coast girl, West Coast Women is one strong, smart, and bold publication. And I'm Helena. Be ready to jump into Girl TV because we are going to spend a day with the toad. Remember, a toad is not the same thing as a frog. One of their differences is that toads occasionally have warts and they have rougher and drier skin. I wonder if mine will. Oh yeah, you do have tadpoles. To find out more about frogs and toads and their differences, you can read the very well-known series, Frog and Toad. Hopefully, they all know the life cycle of a toad. First, the toad lays the eggs. Then the eggs turn into a tadpole, technically the baby stage of a toad. Then they turn into what is like the middle stage of a tadpole and a fully grown toad. It is called the metamorphic stage. It looks like a toad, but smaller, and the legs with the tail still in between them. After the metamorphic stage, they ungrow or shrink their tail and become a fully grown toad. Then the cycle starts all over again, but with their eggs. They are amphibians, which means they are cold-blooded vertebrates, and the babies breathe through gills while the adults breathe through lungs. Vertebrae means that they do have a backbone. Toes are carnivores when they are fully grown, which means that they only eat meat. And when they are tadpoles, they eat plants, which is known as herbivores. Last, when they are at the metamorphic stage, they eat mealworms. Toes have had many reactions and defenses against predators. Their best defense is by dripping high and fast from being eaten. Toes live anywhere with insects and moisture, except for snowy environments. Well, we need to jump out of the water to dry off now. For Girl TV, I'm Helena. And I'm Peyton. Bye! So much news and so little time. I know, isn't the Herald Tribune just packed with valuable and trusted information? I really like the horoscopes, comics, and puzzle pages. How about all the local sports and event articles? Having a lot of information makes me feel really strong and smart. Not to mention bold enough to talk about what's going on in the world. And did you hear that the Herald Tribune is partnering with Girls Inc. as a sponsor for the Celebration Luncheon? I think the Herald Tribune is a really bright spot in Sarasota. Thank you, Herald Tribune, for being the sunshine in our day. Hi, I'm Helena. And I'm Peyton. Be ready to dry off your wings because we are flying with the monarch butterfly. Have you ever heard of the milkweed plant? No, but I've heard of the milkweed butterfly. That's the point. The monarch butterfly has that nickname because that's the only type of plant the monarch's larva can eat. First, we will stop at the egg stage. Monarchs lay their eggs on the milkweed plant, so when they hatch and come out, they have something to eat. After that, we will hatch and see the caterpillar. Now, do you know what the stage when the caterpillar wraps up and forms a chrysalis? Well, that's called the pupa stage. After that, they break out and turn into a butterfly. They can't fly for some time. They have to let their wings dry. When they are fully grown, the original size is compared to a teacup. When the monarch butterfly is two weeks old, its weight is 3,000 pounds as much as it did when it first hatched. According to dictionary.com, a monarch butterfly is a large, dark orange butterfly having black and white markings. Guess what? What? Guess what? What? Guess what? Just tell us already. Monarchs can travel up to 8,000 kilometers every year. That's long. Six states, Alabama, Idaho, Illinois, Texas, 
West Virginia and Minnesota have chosen the monarch butterfly as their official state insect. Now we have to go to a milkweed plant to lay some more eggs so they can hatch and begin the new segment of Girl TV and Monarch Butterfly Cycle. For Girl TV, I'm Peyton. And I'm Hella. But, but oh, I think I see one. Oh, I wish we had a butterfly net. Let's go get one after the show. Okay. From Girl TV, bye. Question, what do Sarasota Magazine and Girls Inc. have in common? Answer, Sarasota Magazine brings out the best in Sarasota, just like Girls Inc. brings out the best in girls. We're both strong, smart, and bold. Thank you, Sarasota Magazine, for supporting Girls Inc. and the Celebration Luncheon. Hi, I'm Zandy. I'm here with Miss Phyllis Kessler at Kane's Furniture. Hi, Miss Phyllis. Hi, Zandy. How are you today? Good. How long have you been working here? I've been working here for 25 and a half years. Wow. It's a long time. How did you get started in your career? I went to the University of Florida and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my career. And I always liked math, so I decided to take an accounting class. <laughs> and I enjoyed it, so that's how I pursued accounting. What is your favorite part of your job? My job has a lot of different aspects to it. I, we have a lot of different things that we do here. We have another company that does real estate investment, and we have real estate partnerships, plus the furniture store, plus we, we're a small company, so we run all the human resources ourselves and everything, and so that's all real exciting. So I wear lots of different hats, so I like that. Who is your role model? Mm, that's a really good question and it's an interesting question that I was thinking about before <laughs> because when I first went to accounting school there were probably maybe four women in each class and now accounting is a profession that's an excellent choice for women because I, I think more than half of the graduates in a, with accounting degrees are women these days and it's an, ex, an excellent profession for women and I think that a lot of employers are, are becoming more aware of what it's like to have women employees and they're being a little more flexible with hours and, and all that so women can try to juggle everything that women women juggle. <laughs> so as an as far as an inspiration, I honestly think that my whole generation of women is an inspiration to me because we kind of were in the, the forefront of, of pursuing careers that were typically dominated by men before. Yeah. Is your job fun? Of course it's fun. Definitely. I like, I like having different things to do and I like being too busy rather than not busy and I always have way too much to do so that I find that fun and I like also being entertained with lots of different things going on and, and lots of people and diversity in my job. Why did you pick your job? Well, I actually had some other jobs. In fact, I worked for the I worked for a J&J um, &J company before. I worked for Tropicana, and I worked for the predecessor to Verizon. And uh, this job, it's it's rounded out my career nicely because I've had utility experience and I've had uh, medical experience and and uh, manufacturing experience. And so here I have retail experience and real estate experience. So. Uh, it's it's just a, a wonderful opportunity and also I've worked for really big companies before where there's lots of layers of management and here we're a small company so we can have um, it's, it's easier for us to make decisions we don't have to go through 20 layers of, of management to do that how many bosses do you have at work one how many people do work how many people work with you well, in my account, my accounting staff, there are about 15, and I have two direct reports, and then a bunch of the other other staff all report to them. So we have a nice group, and everybody gets along really well, and we all contribute to each other, and it's a nice team because team team work is is the biggest concept I think in a work environment. Thank you, Miss Phyllis. Thank you very much, Sandy. For Girl TV, I'm Zandy. Bye. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel. Welcome to Girls, Inc. 
a place where girls learn to be strong, smart, and bold. Strong means when my muscles are big. Daily sports and activities at Girls Inc. help girls to be strong in mind and body. Hey yeah. You're smart about choices. You don't always go along with the crowd. You pay attention in class and get good grades. Girls Inc. makes learning about science, math, art, and technology fun. Programs like Project Bold help girls become strong leaders, build self-confidence, and teaches girls to be themselves. I am Girls Inc. I am Girls Inc. I am Girls Inc. I'm right in my very own backyard right now because today I'm chattering about squirrels. Did you know that squirrels are our very large rodents? They are part of the Scryridae group. Their cousins are woodchucks, marmots, chipmunks, prairie dogs, and flying squirrels. Flying squirrels aren't like general school squirrels. The Scryridae group can be found in either the Americas, Eurasia, Africa, and Australia. Squirrels have slender bodies as well as bushy tail. Their fur is soft and silky, but their fur is usually thicker than most species. Their back legs are larger than their front. They have four to five toes on each paw unless they lose them in a fight or an injury. Squirrels eat nuts, conifer cones, fruits, fungi, green vegetation such as plants, insects, eggs, small birds, young snakes, and smaller rodents. If you want to feed squirrels, you never let them take food from your hands. Just toss them a peanut. They could bite you if, you if they eat from your hands. If you ever get bit by a squirrel, see a doctor. That's all for today's segment. I need to go stock up for hibernation. For Girl TV, I'm Helena. Bye! Hey girls, did you hear? SRQ Magazine's Best of the Shoe is coming out next month. And look who their readers voted best luncheon in Sarasota. Who? The 2012 Girls Inc. Celebration Luncheon. Wow, that's great. I know. You know, all the locally grown girls can continue to do anything we set our minds to, thanks to SRQ Magazine's locally owned supported Girls Inc. Thanks, thanks SRQ, SRQ Magazine. Magazine. Hi, I'm Helena, and today I'm going to be telling you about the seahorse. Did you know that they can be 0.6 inch to 14 inches long? Seahorses are carnivorous, which means that they eat meat, such as brine shrimp. In fact, they can eat up to 3,000 brine shrimp each day. Male seahorses have a pouch on their stomach or their lower front side of their body. This carries their babies. Seahorses wrap their tails wearing corals and seaweeds to catch food. They use their back fins to propel themselves forward, which can flutter up to 35 times a second. Well, time for me to swim away. I think I heard a whale. For Girl TV, I'm Helena. Bye! Girls Inc. is teaching girls not just about now and how to be a better person and how to be a better leader now. They teach about history and how women were treated before. It inspires all the girls to do stuff they never knew they could do. I've learned to be responsible and I've learned to do what I need to do and to get it done. Because it shows younger girls and older girls about the real world, the real world, how it's like. You know when you go to school and the teachers just teach you? When you come here, the teachers teach you, but they treat you as if you're family, as if they care about you. It's one of those places where you can feel like you can be yourself no matter what. You don't have to worry about being scared or anything. It's just a really big opportunity for me to be here, and I just love it. Just being able to laugh out loud and being like girls. <laughs>
Welcome back to Girl TV. I'm Peyton. And I'm Helena. Do you know how to fly? Of course you don't. I bet the dove does. What does the dove have to do with anything? That's what the show is about, remember? Oh yeah, but I thought we were getting some sunflower seeds. No, but I bet the doves are trying to find some. Did you know that you might even know a relative of the dove? He might even live in your backyard. If you guessed the pigeon, you were right. They can lay up to three eggs. They're part of the Zena da Macrora. The dove can live up to 15 years old. They can be about 11 to 13 inches in length. And two to five pounds. When you think of a dove, what first comes to mind? Most people think of love. Which is something it symbolizes. But it also is a sign of peace. Cranes and peace signs represent peace and love also. One predator of a dove is an alligator. A predator is when an animal hunts for their prey. Prey is when the animal is being hunted by their predator. What's that in the water? I think it's a... Uh-oh. I wish we could fly. Well, then we gotta run. For Girl TV, I'm Helena. I'm Peyton. Bye! Bye. Hi, welcome to Girl TV. I'm Peyton, here to interview Dr. Kirk Volker, who happens to be a doctor. What kind of doctor are you? I'm a pulmonologist, and what that means is it's a lung doctor, so I take care of lungs. Is smoking worse for your lungs or your heart? Good question. Actually, both. Now, of course, the smoke goes into your lungs, and can dissolve your lungs and give you emphysema. And emphysema is like if your lungs were a sponge, it's like taking acid and pouring it on that sponge and it eats holes into the lungs. Yeah, I know. Um, it can give you asthma, it can give you all sorts of lung problems. The people that die from smoking, over half of them die from lung problems. So I guess it's worse for your lungs. But probably about 40% of the others that die from smoking die from heart attacks and strokes. So it's bad for your heart too. It's just bad for you in general. And then those that don't die from emphysema or heart attacks and strokes, die from cancer. Yeah. How can kids help their parents if they smoke? Good question. You would think that bugging them would work. It doesn't. Um, the best way you can help your parents is letting them know about people that can help them quit, such as the Florida Quit Line. Florida has a, a number that you can call, and they will give you free nicotine replacement patches in gum to help you quit. So the best thing you can do is help your parents by telling them about the Florida Quit Line. Do you have any advice for young adults who may be thinking of smoking? Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> All right? This is the reason. Because as your brain grows and matures, it doesn't mature until it's about 20 years old. If you start smoking before your, lung, before your brain is matured at, four, at 20 years old, then the receptors for nicotine that are in your brain start multiplying because they get used to the nicotine. And that makes it more likely that you're gonna be a nicotine addict and addicted to smoking or chewing tobacco for the rest of your life. What do you basically do as a doctor in your specialty? Well, I take care of people, one that have destroyed their lungs because of smoking, and people with other lung problems such as asthma, um, chronic bronchitis, and all sorts of lung problems. I also work in the intensive care unit, and that's when people are really, really sick and they're on machines and, and pumps and all sorts of that, and, and I take care of them in there too. Do you mainly research about smoking or do you experiment with it? Well, basically I do research on how to help people quit smoking um, because that's a big thing. Uh, in fact, for every three people that I get to quit smoking, I'm saving one life because one out of three smokers are going to die from a preventable smoking-related death. Why did you choose that certain job? In part because I could help save lives by helping people quit smoking. Did any of your family members smoke? My mother smoked. She died from emphysema and lung cancer. That's why I have such a passion for helping people quit smoking. Was this your first choice of a job? What other jobs did you have in mind? In school, I trained to be an engineer. Not a choo-choo Charlie driving the train engineer, but like a building making things engineer. And my specialty was in biomedical, which is medical devices.
How many years of college do you have to do to be a doctor? I'm going to have you add this up, okay? There were four years of college, four years of medical school, right? One year of internship, two years of residency, right? So now we're up to 11. And then on top of that, there were another three years of my specialty, internal medicine, pulmonary, and critical care. So, what were we up to 14? Yes, 14. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yes. Um, do you have any more advice or information? Well, the main advice is don't pick up a cigarette. Don't start smoking. If you have, it's time to put it down now because before it becomes ingrained in your habits and you become really addicted to it. If you're, if you're messing around with it, just put it down because it's just not worth it because you're going to pay $2,000 a year in $2,012 um, for this habit. That's slowly dissolving your lungs and killing you. So it's just not worth it. Thank you, Dr. Kirk Volkler, for being here today. Thank you, Peyton. I've enjoyed the interview. Thank you. For Girl TV, I'm Peyton. Bye. We would like to thank our supporters and partners for our great new look. I love it. It really highlights you how the... You started too early. We would like to thank our supporters and partners for our new look. Isn't it great? I love it. It really highlights how the girls here at Girls Inc. are... We would like to thank our supporters and partners for our great new look. Isn't I... it great? <sighs> you have to wait. Praise from the animals being hunted by their predator. Yeah, but I thought we were getting some sunflower seeds. I bet the dove... I bet the dove are trying to find... Did you know that the... That... <laughs> you the dove can live up to... Four...